What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Bundesliga career mode. This is episode number seven. We start today's just off with a January transfer window opening where it's just getting harder. Yeah, to start January and the transfer window being opened once again, we see that our three players that have been here on loan have all been recalled by their parent clubs. Andres Andrade, our Panama centre-half, has gone back to LASK, and Milson Fernandez has gone back to Mainz, and we've lost Cybora, the German left-back, who's now gone back to Genoa as well. Which means that our small squad has gotten even smaller... And of course, we get no money for losing those players as they were here on loan as well. So the challenge just gets harder, man. I mean, seriously, absolutely ridiculous. We got around one and three quarter mil in our budget for the remainder of January. But right now, as you can see, on the back of no wins in our last five games, we're currently in 14th place, only four points off her to Berlin in that 16th of final relegation spot. As you know, in the Bundesliga, that 16th place is a relegation playoff with a team in the two Liga. But even so, to lose those three players that are here on loan, listen, none of them were first team starters. They were bench players that would come off the bench. Andrade hadn't really played at all. But I was frustrated with Cybora and Fernandez because those two have actually got quite a lot of game time this season, the first start of the campaign. But the parent clubs decided to recall. So we lose three of our squad players and our small squad now gets even smaller. So dipping into the academy, as you can see, didn't promote anyone in today's episode, but a couple of players there I'm looking out for, uh, Raphael Meyer and this guy, Constantine Schaefer, who I must say looks really good indeed. 17 years old, 63 rated, right back. You see our fixtures for January here. Freiburg away, Firth at home, that's a massive one. And then Frankfurt away as well. I, I think I am now going to start promoting some youth players into our first team. I've been reluctant to do it so far because there isn't a standout candidate in the youth squad that is like really, really good. And I know it could have an impact in the first team in our first season. But due to the sheer lack of numbers we've got, I think for squad depth, it's going to be mandatory with, Again, under £2 million on the budget, not really enough money to make a good signing. I'm, I'm going to need to get more bodies in this first team squad. And the best way to do that for a cheap, uh, for, for cheap amount of money as well is to promote players from the youth squad. Throw them in the first team and see how they get on. Still, first game of today's episode. This was the first game of January. And again, no wins in our last five. However, I often talk about perspective. You know, no wins in our last five. But no losses in our last four. Yeah, four straight Dorals in December and some good results too. Uh, against RB Leipzig and Hertha Berlin away as well. Now taking on Freiburg away from home. We got a huge helping hand for our first goal. Okugawa. I have talked about this guy quite a lot, man. Five in 16 for our Japanese attacking midfielder. You know, I mentioned it. It was back in episode two when I changed he and Robin's positions around. What a decision that was. Because Hack, who's on the ball here 11 minutes in, storms down the left. We know he's got the pace and Okugawa's got the technical ability changing those two rolls around was a really smart move and then 12 minutes in after our deflected first goal gave us the lead we get our second now inside fours linking up Hack storming down left using that electrifying pace he's got and then Vimmer on the right hand side ghosting into the area totally unmarked strikes it into the back of the net and makes it 2-0 so in the first half an hour of this game I was just being really, really aggressive. I think I was really buoyed by our result away against RB Leipzig in the last game. That was a really credible draw away from where I played quite well. I felt more confident heading into this game despite no wins in five and 21 minutes in as Okugawa gets goal number six for the season. He's averaging one in every three games. He's been brilliant this year. He makes it 3-0 and we were just absolutely dominating in the first half an hour of this game. It's been a rare sight for us to be starting games off so strongly, but this was the rare exception. 35 minutes in though, did surrender a cheap goal here. Freiburg back in the game after a really poor pass out there as I always try and play out from the back. 3-1, Freiburg back in it. You know my defense is so bad, so I was starting to get a little bit nervy at this point, thinking if I let Freiburg back in from 3 it up, I'm not going to forgive myself, man. This is a chance at a crucial three points. Cannot throw this away, this lead away. And in the second half, tried to stay in attack mode, look for more goals, but... We would see some bad news here nine minutes after the restart. In this passage of play, 
Kruger goes down, stays down, and I think when you've been playing FIFA long enough, you can kind of tell how bad an injury is going to be, just based on the animation alone. Sarah comes on, and Florian, who's really picked his form up of late, he had a great start to the season, three goals in two, but then none in like 10 games. Since then, he's been much better, but now forced off for injury, and I knew it was a serious one. Just a few minutes later, in an action-packed game here, great save where Ortega kept it 3-1, then from the break, we come on a counter. Vimmer released one-on-one, -on -one and smacks home his second of the game to restore our free goal cushion. i got to say, man, I, I love uh, attacking midfield trio, if you will, with Vimmer on the right, and I know they're wingers, but Vimmer on the right, Hack on the left, and Okugawa through the middle. Look, as, as time goes on, I'm sure a couple of those players will probably be replaced as starters, but I, I want to keep those three as a core here with Bielfeld because whilst only one of them is German in hack and you know I like to have that German core here with Bielfeld Okugawa has been brilliant Vim has been amazing this season as well and I have to say whilst I was thinking with Bielfeld the main reason I chose this team was to get a defensive identity I'm loving how attack minded I can be in certain games and the finishing ability at times is poor I do miss a lot of good chances but when it's clicking and when I'm firing on all cylinders it's just great Vimmer wraps the game up here 5-1 probably our best win of the season and a big one as well as he turns into the invisible man <laughs> what above there you've heard of the man with no legs now you've got the man with no physical body <laughs> Vimmer makes it 5-1 no bags and a hat trick and what a performance that was from our attacking midfield trio Vimmer with three, Okugawa with two. Pack played really well in that game as well. And that is, again, I would say our best win of the season thus far. 5-1 away at Freiburg, but it came at a cost. A massive victory, our first win after none in five. But Florian Kruger, who went down during the game, has done his ACL. Yep, he's grown two ratings this year, seven goals in 18. He's been pretty decent, plus four assists as well. But a 22-year-old now done for this season and that's a major blow because we've got striker depth here we've got Sarah that came off the bench Klaus who of course is the Bielfeld record scorer uh, the veteran Lazme who I haven't really used this season as well but none of those three players have scored a goal this season like none of those three have managed to put the ball in the back of the net yet Klaus Lazme who to be fair I barely played and also Sarah as well none of them have got a goal the only striker that's managed to score so far is, of course, Florian with the seven goals. So to know he's out for the season with a seven-month ACL, that's a huge, huge blow. I think someone can step up and put the ball in the back of the net in his absence, but I don't think it's going to be one of the three strikers. I think it's Vimmer, Hack, or Okugawa. They're almost likely now need to step up in terms of their goal-scoring ability. And when Vimmer got three in the last game, back in the first hat-trick of the season, Robin's been really good this year, and Okugawa already has six as well. I'm starting to think, you know, this 4-2-3-1, I like it. It's my favourite formation, both in FIFA and FM as well. But I'm starting to think about possibly changing it to a 4-3-3 false 9 and having Okugawa as a false 9 in this team. I don't know. Something to think about, you know, tactically, haven't changed too much with the setup since the season began. But I'm certainly considering it now with the injury to Kruger. Still, following that, this is a huge game here. Uh, this was back at Bielfeld, and this was Firth. They are rock bottom of the Bundesliga, and if they're going to stay up, they've got to start getting wins, let alone draws. So this is a massive game. With us coming on the back of a big win against Freiburg, big, big victory, but again, only one win in our last six, and our form has been really, really poor, to be fair, all season long, very inconsistent. This is a huge game for both teams, and what you call a relegation six-pointer. It was very even until the hour mark when the deadlock was broken, and I had to hold my hands up. I got this wrong. You cannot bring the goalkeeper out against the AI on Ultimate in this year's FIFA. How is it January and I still haven't learned my lesson yet? I start taking out Ortega. Llewellyn, who's got so much pace, as we know, runs forward, chips it over our goalkeeper and finds the unguard in there to make it 1-0. But a few minutes later, after falling behind, I couldn't afford to lose this game. We needed to find a leveler. And to be fair, this is what you call taking one for the team. Finn Ole Becker, former St. Pauli midfielder, storming into the area, wins a penalty. You don't get many against the the AI on ultimate. So you got to make sure you convert them when you do get them. You might only get one or two a season in normal time. we got one here. Okugawa stands up. It's three and two and seven for the season. And yeah, I'm definitely thinking now, if our form doesn't improve, I'm willing to make a tactical change and try that 4-3-3 false nine with Okugawa as the false nine. Because he, he just seems to be at the heart of everything in this team. And as the playmaker, that's not a real surprise. But he's clearly got finishing ability with seven goals all season long. 
And I think as a false nine, he'd, he'd do really, really well in this team. He'd find our leveler from the spot and the momentum totally changed. It had been mostly all about Firth looking for, their, uh, looking for a big win here at the bottom of the table. And then after we scored from the penalty, it was all Bielfeld looking for that late winner. Trying to turn the game on its head. Again, Okugawa at half. Everything, really. Setting them up. Going for goal himself. And it was six minutes to go. Across into the middle. Headed over in what was eventually a 1-1 draw. So it's now one win in our last seven for Bielfeld. Really, really struggling patch of form. And what you call a missed opportunity here, to be honest, I, I really should have won this game. I had some great chances right towards the end. Just didn't get the finishing touch right. But the only good thing, again, is knowing that whilst Kruger has gone down and he's done for the season, Okugawa has now equaled his goal tally. So I, I do feel as Becker goes down for two months as well, whilst it does get harder and the challenge, which was already difficult, has now gotten even harder. We've lost Kruger for the season. Becker is done for two months as well. I'm liking the challenge. I really, really am. Our small squad gets even smaller with the lo loan deals expiring and now two of our first 11 getting injured as well. We're still above the drop for now. And whilst again, only one win in seven, it's all about perspective. No defeats in our last six games. Starting to gain a little bit of resilience as we slowly and gradually climb up the table. But that will end today's episode of the Bundesliga Karimo, guys. Big thank you for watching. Hope you have enjoyed it. If you haven't, please drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day and don't miss the next episode. First youth players get promoted and one is exciting indeed. Have a great day and much love and I'll see you for the next episode very soon.